everybody, welcome to Drive Through Review 702. Today I'm going to talk about Blood Bowl, the second season edition. So this is kind of an iteration off the last edition, which came out in 2016, which I do have a video for, and I've got another video for it. So I'll put links to my two original Blood Bowl videos in the description. And I'm not going to do like a whole like how to play the game, because I already did that. And plus the uh, Games Workshop folks have put out like a 12 part series on how to play the game as well, which I'll put a link to below as well as a link to the how to paint video. They have several how to paint videos on how to get these painted quickly or get these painted with high quality. I'll put a link to those playlists as below as well. But I will go over the changes between this edition and basically all the editions before it because there are some significant changes here. And I'll kind of give you a general review of the product uh, itself. A little bit of a spoiler here, like recently I reviewed the Warcry Catacombs box set for Warcry and I kind of, it was kind of all over the place in that review. Uh, this is kind of uh, the other side of the coin uh, from that review in terms of like the production quality and the presentation and everything, which we'll get into in a minute. So I'm going to kind of go over that kind of stuff too, but then I'm also going to highlight some of the key uh, rules changes uh, to the game and kind of come back and give you my general thoughts. So let's go down to the table. You can take a look at some of the components and stuff and then we'll go from there. So the first thing to kind of talk about here, and this might seem silly, but I don't think it is, is the box cover. And you can see there's a definite different artistic sensibility that they've kind of gone with with this edition and you'll see that throughout the rest of the game. Uh, but this is kind of carrying through uh, I think the art sensibility of the Spike magazine. They kind of have this special Blood Bowl magazine that comes out, I don't think it's every month, but it comes out pretty frequently throughout the year. And they've kind of carried that through and kind of leaned into kind of that side of the game, some of that, the more silly narrative parts of the game and really kind of leaned into that a little bit here. Okay, let's just kind of dive into things here. And I see I haven't actually painted any of this stuff, which isn't typical of me, but I did kind of want to just show you what it looks like unpainted. I actually do plan on painting these and playing with them painted. Uh, a couple of things that I wanted to kind of highlight for the review purposes. First is probably my main and maybe only niggling complaint with this is you can see like this is one of the human characters that comes in there and you can see it's got that little slit there, which typically is what you would insert into the base. You'd have some kind of you know bar that inserts here, but most of these characters, actually the main team characters, don't even use that. But it does have the little hole here for putting the ball in. This is my only thing because it's like these models don't actually use that. So now you've got to cover that up, which is not even close to the end of the world. But it's just a little odd because I never <laughs> use those holes to carry the ball. I just put it in the spot by it. Now, some other players might, but anytime I've played this game, nobody uses this little slot here to carry the ball. So I think that's my only gripe is it seems a little strange but maybe I should start using that slot or something. Maybe I'll try to leave that hole this time when I paint these. But get that out of the way. You got your standard stuff here. You got your nice little passing ruler here, which breaks apart so it's easier to store. You've got your throw-in marker and your scatter marker over there. They give you two full teams. You get the Imperial Humans and then the Black Works. And these are two new teams that haven't existed in the game. And I believe there's a new Undead team which hasn't existed. And there is support for all the pre-existing teams, even some of the legendary teams. They have a PDF, which I'll put a link to in the description. Uh, if you have some really old Blood Bowl teams that don't make models for anyway, then you can pull those down and, and play with them. But the other cool thing that they do is they actually give you four star characters here. So they can be kind of two that are compatible with the uh, the human team here and with other teams. You have this big ogre and then this kind of really special imperial character. And then you have here a troll and then like a super black orc guy here. And these are probably a little bit tricky there to see what they are. But these here, and I think I want to say the black art guy is new. Yeah, he's he's a new special character. The troll has been around. And then I should say the I know the ogre has been around. And then this this new imperial character here, he's a new one. Uh, and so the way that they actually uh, work this out is that each of the teams gonna is gonna have one or more traits. Like this is called old world classic, and there's a couple of traits for this one is like bribery and something, and then badlands uh, corruption. I, th I think I got that right, it's probably wrong. And so if, depending on the trait, you can assign different abilities and inducements that will match up with any team that has that trait, and then certain of the 
special characters can match up with certain teams. So it's possible that you could have a character that can go with any team. And then, you know, either player could use that. And then they threw this other nice little thing in here. These are referees here. So they kind of gave you these two models. And I believe these are both new. I'm not 100% sure. I feel like I've seen this one before. Here, this dwarf referee there. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure if I've seen this elf one, but these might exist already. But they have these in the box, and these are just kind of a fun thing to have. So they kind of give you kind of above and beyond. They really... In the last edition, they didn't include any special characters or anything like that in the box. They just kind of gave you, it was a different human team and a different uh, orc team, if I recall correctly. So you've got that. And of course, you get all the custom dice that are, the dice are the same, uh, you know, mechanically for each team. But they give you custom colors and stuff and then little tokens and things for marking in your dugout and so on. And as you can see, these are double-sided. It's got kind of a more clean and pristine side and then a dungeony kind of look here and this board is double-sided you've got the outdoor grass then on the back side you've got a dungeon board as well but what i really want to talk about is the rules presentation as well as these cheat sheets or player aids now each team gets a pretty much identical player aid with some fold outs and things so this makes it really easy to reference the key things in the game, some iconography explanations different uh, tables so the kickoff table which you're always going to be referring to the weather table, a little bit of a turn diagram, and so on. And you've got the real basic stats. This game is not a game that has a lot of stats uh, for your teams. And this this is where it differs here. So you have the, the Black Orc team up here on, on that one, and then the human team on this one. But other than that, these are the same things, injury roll stuff and all that. So really, and this is all you need to play the game. If you were like going to teach, you know, one of your kids or something, or a casual gamer, and, you know, if you know the game, this is easy to just... Get them, get them in and get them running and they'll just be able to refer to this and you'll be playing really quickly and smoothly because the game mechanics themselves are a breeze once you learn them. Uh, but the main thing is this rule book and the presentation and that's where I think the last edition kind of fell down and frankly where when they released Necromunda that same year it kind of fell down as well and they've got, gone a long ways to kind of shoring up the production and kind of the rollout cadence and all that kind of stuff in Necromunda. And that was one of the things that turned me off and kind of basically let Blood Bowl slip off the radar for me is how they were kind of trickling out book after book after book and team after team with rule after rule and all that stuff. It, it, that's, it, this isn't, you know, 40K or Age of Sigma or something where that kind of thing should be expected. This is a kind of a self-contained experience or it should be as close to as possible. And they've really kind of pivoted here with this edition to not only fixing, not necessarily fixing it, there might be some argument about fixing rules, but for me, fixing some of the rules, as well as fixing, probably more importantly, the production schedule and just the general presentation of the game. So this rule book here is gonna contain everything that you need, including league play and all kinds of other fun stuff. So this is everything that you're gonna get. Now you can get this rule book separately, and I believe it's $50 separate, so probably with like kind of your online discount, you can get it for about 40 bucks or so. Uh, and I should say the box in general is about 140, this is US dollars, but I've seen it go online, you know, for 120 or like, you know, my local store does discounts and things um, if you buy a certain amount. And so you can get it for about 120. So you're, you're definitely in a more reasonable price ballpark than I think some of their more recent big box releases. And so just kind of a general presentation here. Here is a little bit of a lore presentation. Uh, and things like that, it's kind of the background of Blood Bowl and stuff. And then you move into the rules. And the rules are presented very nicely. They've, they've made a couple of key changes, but they've also made some presentation changes here. So if we take a look here, this is one of my main example here. So these have this thing called tackle zones, which still exist, but they have a very straightforward explanation of when a player is marked versus not marked. So it basically, if you're in their tackle zone, if you're in somebody else's tackle zone, then you're marked. If you're not, then you're open. And so the rules will refer to it in that way. And they carry this over from Blitz Bowl, which just makes playing Blitz Bowl that much more intuitive and that more intuitive to teach. And so when you go to look at like the passing game and you know picking up the ball and blocking and all that stuff, it's much easier and more straightforward to understand with this whole marked versus open concept here. And then in a similar way, they've changed some of these stats. Instead of being a fixed number, it's like a target number. So the agility passing, which is a new stat altogether, and then the armor value, the AV, is like eight plus, four plus, and so on. So you're gonna modify uh, those targets there 
to, you know, in this a little bit more intuitive in terms of explaining like, oh, what you need. So you need to pass agility. Okay, so you gotta roll a three plus. Or in your armor value, this is, you know, they gotta roll an eight plus. And you can modify, well, the modifiers are much more easier uh, to interpret then. So that those are kind of two real small changes. Don't really change the rules per se. It just kind of changes the presentation and the instruction of the rules, which I think is gonna be a little bit more easier to teach new people. Now I've talked about passing here, and it's nice because they have this nice big, you know, multicolored spread here on how to do passing, because this is like the absolute biggest change uh, in the game. And so the main change here is that you're going to have sort of passing accuracies. Uh, so if you have an accurate pass, an inaccurate pass, a wildly inaccurate pass, if they roll a one, that's going to change uh, the ability to basically intercept the pass, which is a, the, really the key to me, the change of this. So instead of rolling to intercept before the passes roll, like it used to be, you'll throw the pass and then you'll get kind of a degree. You might have an accurate pass. You might have you know, an inaccurate pass. So that's gonna kind of change up the effects of when the people go to intercept or catch the pass. And so in that case, you're gonna throw the pass first, which just makes way more sense before you start rolling about interceptions or catching anything. And so then the person that theoretically could intercept it, instead of just intercept, now you have the ability to deflect it. So if you get a, def sexual, a, excuse me, a successful deflection, then you have the ability to possibly catch it as the deflecting or the intercepting player. So kind of the order of operations here just make a whole lot more sense and it's just a lot more intuitive uh, to explain to people. So you'll throw the pass, check its accuracy, make sure you didn't actually fumble the pass, check to see if there's anybody that's in uh, kind of the line of sight or under the, the range ruler there, they have the ability to try to do an interception and then, or deflection, I should say. And then if they get a deflection, then they can try to catch it, which would be an interception. But if they fail it or there's nobody there, then the person trying to catch it will try to catch it. And so importantly here, we also have, just to mention this, we have a passing ability here. So you can see all these folks here have a passing ability four, five, five. And so you have the lineman here with a four. So he's a little, he's okay. But if we look at here, this is the dwarf team. You can see some of these folks don't actually have a pass ability. So they'll, if you try to pass with them, they'll just automatically fumble the ball. So that is going to, I think, dictate kind of the meta of how people can build their teams. Because I think maybe people could build sort of really kitted out, you know, not really intended uh, to be built in a certain way types of teams because you could have everybody passing and you know Maybe there's some characters in there that really shouldn't have any business passing the ball So that's probably the largest rule change uh, to the game and just while we're looking at a team here So you can see a couple of things that are real interesting about how these teams work here And you got your typical stats and how much a gold pieces it costs and so on uh, But what I want to focus in on here are these special rules. I talked about this before so you have old world classic for this dwarf team and then World's Edge Super League. So any inducement, special ability, uh, superstar has to fall into that or be under the any category. And then that's only this team can, that can take it. Whereas if you go over here, this Elven Kingdoms team uh, here can only you know take those abilities and stars from there. But the other thing to notice here is you have here a tier one. So the dwarf team here is a tier one. And then if you look at the Elven Union team, that's a tier two. And just so we know, the two teams that come in the box are both marked as tier two. So that gives you kind of a sense in terms of the handicapping and so on uh, that can happen. Now there's no real rules centered around the tiers right now. There are some rules on, in terms of the comparable team values, uh, but I think that kind of leaves it open to um, you know, possibly handicapping down the road and stuff. I think maybe they're going to let kind of the community uh, deal with that in terms of the, the, how that you might play with that in a league or a tournament or something. But speaking of leagues and things, now the nice thing about this is this has tons of rules for you know, improving, advancing your team, uh, all kinds of extracurricular stuff happening after the game, running leagues and so on, all the different skills and everything that you need. Uh, everything's in here. And, and like I said before, the original or the last edition kind of trickled all that stuff out to here. Um, so this is, 
you just need this. So if you've already got a bunch of Blood Bowl teams and you want to start playing with the new rules, you can just pick up this rule book and it'll have the, you know, the changes and the values and all the modifiers and all that stuff, but it'll have all the up-to-date league rules and this is all you should really ever need. I'm sure they'll come out with other expansions and books, but this is just, this will get you in and this will be hours and hours and hours of, of play uh, to get into. Now there was, is one sort of idiosyncrasy and I'll just skip ahead here. And this is one thing that I don't really like about the book layout, but I think it's okay. And I can, I feel like I can be augured off the ledge uh, in terms of not liking this because you have this exhibition play. So preceding this, you have kind of mixed in here a lot of the league and, you know, kind of campaign rules kind of built into this, which I think is important and really what the game services. But to get you into that first game, you know, you're like, okay, I have how many fans do I have now with the fan role at the beginning of the game and like, you know, this and that. And so I don't care about, you know, I have the draft players. I just want to open the box, build my models, maybe paint them and then jump in and start playing. Well, this is what you want the ex exhibition game right here. So this is kind of way in the back almost here. Um, and then it, it just gives you kind of like how to kind of adjust things because it, the game kind of figures that you're going to have abilities and fans and inducements and stuff like that into the game. And this kind of gives you all of the little sort of, okay, well, if you're playing an exhibition game, just treat this like this. And that's all back here, kind of after the main rules and the skills and the, so the campaign stuff and like that. So that's a little bit tricky to kind of hunt down and find, but I think they make up for that because like I said, I'm gonna be linking to their series of videos on how to play. And they cover all that stuff in those videos actually. So it's not too long to sit through and kind of bite size, you know, consume those videos and you'll be jumping in and ready to go. And then this is a great reference at that point because that's a great teach. And this is, this is really geared towards being, a, uh, I would say slightly better as a reference than a teaching tool, uh, but they kind of make up for it with those videos. And it's got a great index in the back uh, the table of contents, you know, everything is very easily kind of color coded and where to find things. So you're like, okay, what's that skill do? Bam, you can open to the skill. Or how does passing work like I showed you? You know, you can jump right to the passing section or, you know, all this kind of stuff. Uh, so for looking up stuff like little kind of quirks and idiosyncrasies about the game, you can jump right to a section here and then it'll say, okay, do this, do this. And it's usually always a straightforward thing. It's just not all, you know, the most obvious the first or two second time you play the game. I think that's it, but I did want to mark one other kind of, I think, significant change here. Let's find it. And this is here in the post game sequence, kind of the aftermath, uh, which is an important part of the Blood Bowl. So we'll zoom in on this chart, and this is new here. So you can see here, you've got kind of a couple different choices um, and how to spend your star player points. And you get star player points for lots of different stuff here. So you can look at the kind of this thing here, it's getting touchdowns, completions, uh, causing a casualties and stuff like that. So each of the players will kind of individually sort of level up. They're kind of like experience points. And then so for your first advancement, you could, if you want, just spend three and then you get a random skill. Or if you can wait and get six, then you can choose one or get a random secondary skill and so on. So you can choose or get random here. It costs you more points to choose and less points to random. So that's like kind of a neat, interesting uh, way to kind of approach this here. And the cost goes up as you get more advancements uh, for the player and stuff. So I thought that was kind of a neat thing. And I don't think that the way that you accrue them is exactly the same. I'm a little bit fuzzy on that, but I think there's a little, there's a few more ways to actually get the points here. So I think they kind of bake that into the random versus the select. So there's a few more ways to get it, but then, so you can kind of hold out and try to have a better shot at getting the one that you want and so on, or you can just kind of, you know, use the luck of the dice there. So that's the gist of kind of the, some of the production and presentation changes as well as some of, I think the key rule changes. So if you've not played Blood Bowl, I kind of jump up to my final thoughts, give you some idea about it. Okay, so that's a breakdown of uh, some of the rule changes and the production changes and so on for the second season edition of Blood Bowl. Uh, like I said, I've already done a couple of videos on it. Uh, I can walk through my kind of pillars of review, which I haven't done on this game. Uh, obviously, player count, two players. <laughs> uh, I've never actually played in a league of Blood Bowl though, so that'll kind of open it up to more players. I think that could be fun. Right now, this video is being made during the time of COVID, so that's not happening, uh, but that could be something I would be interested in doing uh, because originally when I played Blood Bowl before, I mean, I wasn't even painting miniatures when the last 
season or edition of Blood Bowl came out. I think I was just, I was literally just getting into that stuff. And so it wasn't something that I, you know, had really invested in or anything. And wasn't really playing that many miniature games. It was kind of right at the start. And this wasn't really like the thing that I will lean into, like Age of Sigmar and Frostgrave and so on. Um, but now, you know, it's kind of at the point where, hey, you know, I'm gonna get these painted up and, and try to get some more games of it in because I kind of have a different sensibility now uh, for this style of game. And like I said, they have some really cool videos, uh, Games Workshop does, on how to really get these painted pretty quickly and I think, you know, without a whole, spending a whole ton of money on paint. Um, so I would recommend those. I'll have links to those below. Because I do think this is a good kind of entry-level style of game in a way. Now, it's not as entry-level as some games because, you know, it's a little bit hefty of a price tag. I don't think it's, I think it's a good value, honestly, where it is. Especially if you can get find it for like 120 bucks US. Um, because you got your two teams, complete teams. You got the extra characters. The referees, the, the nice rule book, the extra player aids, all the custom dice, and all that kind of fun stuff, and so you've got a good value product that you know maybe you and a buddy can split, or you can buy for one of your kids or something. And the rules are such in the presentation with the rules videos that they put out, which I think is that's part of the package, right? I mean, even though it's out there, it's free for everybody. If you're going to invest in this. They've also made some investment in creating really high quality how to play videos. Uh, so that's that's part of the deal. You've got to consider that. Uh, so it, this is a good kind of introduction. Now you can sit down and play a quick game of this pretty quickly and easily, and then kind of slowly, again, start to layer on some of the campaign and the league play stuff. Uh, so I think this game is, is kind of perfectly positioned for this, especially if you're a fan of American style football or sports in general. Um, this is really kind of, you considered to be like the king of all the sports board games. So this is definitely one that I think you want to try at least uh, in your life. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm going to jump in and get these painted and, uh, and, and hopefully get some more games in with it. Now in terms of what this game is like, what are other games like this? Now I've gone kind of back and forth with this. Having sat down and kind of played a demo session of this with uh, some of the new rules and trying those out, which I really do like. Like, it's really kind of turned me on to this game again. Because for a while there, I was actually leaning to where I'd rather play Blitz Bowl than Blood Bowl. Because Blitz Bowl you can play in about 20, probably 30 minutes, to be honest. And this one's going to take you probably an hour and a half or so. Maybe two hours. Because uh, it can kind of drag a little bit. But I don't, I don't know that that would be necessarily the case because when I played it before, I was still kind of like learning the game. But now, having played some more miniature games and stuff like that, I think the time commitment's gonna go way down. Uh, just because there is something about this game and the way that the positioning and the tactic stuff works out. Uh, and I have to kind of explain to you, and this is how it was explained to me years ago. And the thing that you wanna keep in mind is with this game, is you want to do all the easy stuff first on your turn. And so you want to do all the stuff that you can sort of, you know you can get away with in terms of moving guys into position in a, a certain kind of blocking formation, you know, positioning possible receivers out on the board, all that kind of stuff. And then you want to start your risky stuff after that, like throwing the ball, running the ball here, maybe throwing a block and so on. And it really kind of the consideration of that and trying to figure out, okay, is this more important than this? Because it, as the moves start to become more risky, because as you roll and then, you know, you get a failure, that's a turnover and it goes to the other side. So that becomes a real interesting kind of decision space uh, to live in. So that learning that and kind of dealing with the bad decisions that you're inevitably going to make as a new player uh, is going to kind of slow the game down a little bit. But I think if both players are experienced enough then the games will be a lot snappier. So I don't really see this with experienced players taking much longer than 90 minutes. Um, you know, because I've heard horror, I've never played a three hour game of this. Um, I think the first time I played it, we were up over, we were around about two hours. Um, but I've heard people say, well, it took me three hours. And I was like, holy cow, <laughs> how did that happen? Um, you know, it's not out of the realm of possibility because some people are more prone to AP. But this is, this is kind of that meaty, big sports game, which doesn't really exist outside of this space. Um, you know, my other favorites are Blitz Bowl, Dread Ball, and Guild Ball when it existed, and then also um, the wrestling game that's escaping me. 
Oh, Rumble Slam. And Rumble Slam is probably my favorite, I would say right now. But again, Rumble Slam, Blitz Ball, um, Guild Ball, even. Guild Ball go about 90 minutes, maybe. Kind of depends. Probably about an hour. Um, but honestly, to me, Blood Bowl, Blitz Bowl, and then Rumble Slam. Those are my kind of the top three. Um, Rumble Slam I really like as well. And that one, again, that one you can get played 30, 45 minutes. But as far as like on the ones that take a little bit longer on, on the high end of the player time, which should really be about 90 minutes once you get the hang of it, this one really is that one kind of main meaty sports game that just kind of keeps uh, hanging out and staying fun. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of a ballpark of where this game, kind of game sits. And like I said, I never played the leagues or the campaigns or anything. I think that just that would just add on that extra layer of fun and individualizing your players and kind of having the season of uh, you know the various matches that you play. Um, so hopefully, I can try to find uh, folks that would be into doing that because I think that that extra layer kind of is what's needed, like a Necromunda or a Frostgrave. You know, playing one-off games of those, those that's fun. I mean, don't get me wrong. But you kind of need that league sort of atmosphere, I think, to get the full experience. Because then when, you know, Billy Bobby, Frankie Bobby is, you know, running down the field and he's now your legendary player and you've got the possibility of him getting injured and possibly, you know, dying or getting a terrible effect or something on him, then you kind of look at the game a little bit differently. So uh, adding in that kind of campaign layer is something that I've not done yet, but I think it will add to the game. So anyway, that's kind of a general overview of everything and a little bit of a ramble after it. So definitely take a look at this edition. It's coming out now for the holiday season. So I think it's a good time to take a look at it and maybe get it you and a buddy or maybe you with your kids or something like that. So thanks.